Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In Proverbs chapter 5, uh, we have a warning against sexual immorality. And then a call to return back to one's wife for sexual gratification. And then at the end, there are two basic truths that are presented before us. And one is that God sees, and two, that there is consequences for our actions. Uh, in verse 21, it says, For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he watches all his paths. And that's important to realize, especially for someone who's committing sexual immorality, because typically that sin is done in the dark, it's done in secret, and the person who's engaged in that type of activity typically tries to keep it hidden. But this truth would be like a warning against someone who was involved in sexual immorality, and that is, Again, that God sees what an individual is doing, even though they may be doing it in a secret way, in a hidden way, they may be doing it in the dark, but God sees what an individual is doing. And then secondly, that, the, that there are consequences for one's actions. Verses 22 and 23, His own iniquities will capture the wicked, and he will be held with the cords of his sin. He will die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he will go astray. And so this teaches us that there are consequences for our actions. Even though we might try to do these things in secret and in a hidden way, eventually things have a way of catching up with us, and, um, and that we would then have to suffer the consequences of our actions. And of course this would be true with sexual immorality. Um, a person might get away with it for quite some time, but eventually those types of things come to light. And of course, the Lord sees what an individual is doing and of course, will deal uh, accordingly. And so this would definitely apply to sexual immorality, but this could apply to many, many sins. Um, there's a real tie between sin and secrecy. Are you talking about uh, sexual immorality or you're talking about... Um, stealing or you're talking about telling lies typically people who sin try to do it in secret uh, they don't want people to know what they're doing uh, and the reason why they don't want people to know what they're doing is because they think if they keep it a secret that then they won't have to suffer the consequences as long as i can steal and no one knows that i'm stealing then i can not have consequences or uh, I can be involved in sexual immorality, adultery, and things of that sort. If I, As long as I can keep it hidden, then there will be no consequences. Or I can tell a lie, and as long as I can cover up my lie and not allow it to come to the light, then I won't have to deal with the consequences. And so, typically sin is done in secret so that there are no consequences. At least that's what a person thinks when they're committing the sin. But this, these verses pull the rug out of that type of thinking because it teaches us that no sin is done in secret. Um, other people may not know about it, but God sees it. And then secondly, it teaches us that there are consequences for sin because God sees uh, what's going on. And so it's a warning to say that, yeah, you may be doing it in secret. No one may know about it. And therefore, I uh, may think that there will be no consequences tied to it. But in truth, God does see, and that God is a God who, out of love, disciplines his children, and out of love and care to get people back restored to him, does allow people to experience the fruits of their decisions. And so, this these verses ought to really bring to the forefront of our minds, you know, why we should refrain from sin. If we want to avoid this altogether, of course, the, the simple solution is just not to commit the sin. Then we don't have to worry about trying to hide it. Then we don't have to worry about the consequences that might be hiding around the next corner. We don't have to worry about these things being exposed before the Lord or even before others. As long as we can keep a pure life and walk before the Lord with integrity, then we don't have to worry about these, these types of things. And actually we'll have what the psalmist in Psalm 139 had, and that is when he thought about how God saw him when he was sitting down and when he rose up and when he was walking along the way, 
when he reflected on the fact that God saw everything that he did, that was a comfort to him. Uh, that was actually a good thing for him because he was living a life of integrity. But a person who is walking in sin and in trying to hide those sins, um, of course, it leads to anxiety and fear and guilt and all those things. And so this is a call for us to live a life of integrity. If we have sins that we're struggling with, take those to the Lord, trust in the Lord to help us to overcome those temptations, to walk in the strength of his might, and to move forward in the spiritual life, uh, all the more experiencing sanctification and separation from uh, the sins of our past. So here's some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.